Each summer, I teach at the Cranberry Lake Biological Station, a remote wilderness field school in the Adirondacks. It's a community of scientists and students surrounded by rich forests and glittering lakes where bears and loons are our neighbors. We may think we're learning about wild lives, but in fact, we're learning from them. One of our best teachers returns every summer, just after the summer solstice, clambering her way up a steep bluff from the lake under cover of darkness to lay her eggs in the warm, open sand of our volleyball court. With powerful bear-like paws, she flings the sand aside, digging furiously, her sharp-snouted mouth open and gasping for breath. She rests for a minute and digs some more with fierce maternal commitment and utter disregard for the students who surround her, snapping photos as eggs like leathery ping pong balls leave her body. When she has covered them safely, she entrusts them to the earth and makes her way back to the water. She and I, we go back a long time to a story we both remember, a creation story of my people, the Potawatomi. It is a story of how the troubled world was cleansed by a great flood and our new home was made on the back of a turtle who gave herself so that we might live. The turtle reminds me that I owe my small human life to the generosity of the more than human beings with whom we share this precious homeland. The earth was made not by one alone, but from the alchemy of two essential elements, gratitude for the gifts of the earth and the covenant of reciprocity that we humans give our gifts in return. Together, they formed what we know today as Turtle Island or North America. As our creation story attests, snapping turtles are long-lived solitary beings. They leave the water only to lay eggs and can make extensive overland journeys to find just the right spot. As predictable as the solstice, this mother comes every year. We know her by the little notch marked in the edge of her shell. There are hundreds of sandy places for a snapping turtle nest, but for some reason, this one brings her offspring to us. Our students are thrilled to witness this. It is a highlight of their field biology summer, but they also want to play volleyball. So they carefully unearth the eggs and with loving care, take the eggs to another site good for incubation. Warm, dry sand, safe from predators, so the baby snappers will hatch. A few years ago, there was a second mother in just the same spot on our volleyball court. The next day, there was another, and another. One day, there were two basking right on the welcome mat of the camp headquarters. In all, more than a dozen snapping turtles came to us in as many days. A deluge of turtles. As scientists, we asked why. Why would reclusive, solitary beings struggle up a rocky bluff and walk into a community of a hundred humans? Why did they come to us to do their most important thing? When our students went to find sites to move the batches of eggs, they found one answer. The usual sand spits the turtles favor were underwater from unusually heavy rains. As the lake level rose, they had to seek higher ground. The snapping turtles had become climate refugees. 
I think there was another reason. I think the turtles came with a kind of desperation to ask us to pay attention. Science armed with models to predict the coming changes and thermometers to seek out refuges. It's a powerful tool for addressing climate change, but it is not the only one. As a scientist, I hear the indisputable data and also a message carried by snapping turtles, simultaneously material and spiritual. The earth asks more of us than gratitude. The earth asks that we leave behind a culture of endless taking so that the world can continue. This is the message carried by those turtles. We teeter on the brink of climate catastrophe with our plant and animal relatives disappearing in waves of extinction. It's no longer a matter of small acts of stewardship, not enough to tenderly move the eggs from one place to another when there are no more places for them to go. Not enough to write praise songs for turtles, not enough to study the hormones that can turn the eggs to males when the temperature rises. The earth asks that we give our considerable gifts in return for all we've been given and in return for all we've taken. We are called to a movement made of equal parts outrage and love. We humans carry gifts of our own. We are change makers. We are earth shapers riding on the back of the turtle. We have to join together paddle against the wind, paddle against the tide, singing our hearts out. When the turtles come among us asking for help, we must remember that at the beginning of the world, they were our life raft. And now, so much closer to the end, we must be theirs. <laughs>